Hi, I'm Pastor Rick, and it's Tuesday of Passion Week. Have you ever heard someone talking about being a Christian, but you can't help but wonder about their claims based on their behavior? Following Jesus is more than following a set of rules, and yet it is also more than a matter-of-fact declaration. It's more than having a head full of knowledge with a good-looking exterior. On Tuesday, Jesus again entered the temple and was teaching. The religious leaders wanted badly to arrest Jesus, but were afraid of the crowd. They sent some Pharisees, then some Sadducees, and finally teachers of the law to try to trap Jesus in what he was saying. In Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34, Mark writes, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no great commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and that there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Jesus had not randomly come up with this answer. He answered the teacher of the law by quoting from the writings of Moses in the Torah, which is the first five books of the Old Testament for us. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, Jesus quotes the beginning of the basic confession of the Jewish faith. It's called the Shema. He responds to the teachers of the law by quoting from it, and then adds that the second greatest commandment, which comes from Le Leviticus 19.18, is love your neighbor as yourself. The religious leaders of the day had a major amount of head knowledge and they prided themselves not just in their knowledge but also in their status among people. Later that same day, Jesus had a scathing summary of the religious leaders. Mark again quotes it in verses 38 through 40 of chapter 12. As he taught, Jesus said, watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and have the most important seats in the synagogue and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show, they make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus is different and he calls his followers to be humble and full of compassion. Jesus didn't fit their ideas of what a Messiah would look like, the Savior. Jesus didn't fit their ideas of how the Messiah should act. Who is this Jesus who healed the sick, who taught with authority, who associated with sinners of this world, whom the winds and the waves obey? Who is this Jesus? He's the same Jesus who calls us to follow him daily. Luke writes in chapter 9, verses 23 and 20, through 26, Then he said to them, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit or lose their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. You see, this all ties together. If we're going to love the Lord with all we have, being his follower, and his disciple, then we must also be willing to give up everything. 
Do we love the Lord with all that we have and everything that we do? Is our love for the Lord evident in how we treat other people, even when we don't agree with them? It's Passion Week. Consider this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's Tuesday. And Jesus takes another step closer to the cross.